Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Let's take you through the pages of the national dailies as we look at the top stories making the rounds. We have Chris Mwandu who joins the conversation. Good morning, Chris. It's good to have you join us. Merci, and I hope you had a nice Valentine. Yes. <laughs> Mercy is refusing to admit that she had a nice Valentine. Uh, but... <laughs> but it shows on her face. She what? did. It is. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Wanda, I can say the beam, the smile on your face is, is, is um, indicative of a, a spectacular Valentine's you had. After, after over 21 years in marriage, we no longer <laughs> have a new Valentine. We are now cruising. So every day for me, it's Valentine. Every day. Fantastic. So Fantastic. Chris, let, let's begin to cruise with the papers this morning as we look at the Vanguard. And the focus would be on some of the top stories. I mean, for the want of time. You have drug bust. How NDLEA nailed, arrested DCP Carrie, that's about Carrie and four others. And suspended police chief implicated in the 25 kg cocaine deal. And uh, that's the first rider alleged to have bribed the NDLEA men with $61,000 to retrieve the seized drugs, replace them with dummy exhibits. You also have another rider saying the NDLEA declared Carey wanted after he allegedly shown invitation and police arrested Carey. Others took them, others took to custody last Friday and handed over to the NDLEA. That might just be dominating all of the papers this morning. Bad fuel, you have flawed market with petrol and marketers, others beg federal government. Subsidy, COVID-19 spending, taking 2022 budget uh, and the deficit to 10 trillion naira. Quite worrisome, if you ask me. Why we're going on a one-month warning strike, that's what asked to quoted to say, a UNICEF calls for end to recruitment of child soldiers in conflict. Really, really also another sad one. Battle for consensus candidate puts APC National Convention at risk, and 2023 presidency drop fears and prejudice against Igbo. Or Hanese is quoted. Electoral Act Amendment Bill now. PDP governors tell Buhari, Apparently, he signed the Electoral Act Amendment Bill now. Uh, the PDP governor is telling Buhari. And uh, you have the West African Examination Council saying 48.61% obtained credit in English, mathematics, and three others. And 2023, stop distracting the Mephili Group 1's politicians so he can be focused with monetary policy and governing the nation but that, mm. that's the much you, you know you know like they say waiting waiting musa no go see forget <laughs> I don't you know, know i mean it was i don't, was, know. I don't know how many people were you, were you know you've been giving to, a lot of parables this morning oh yes um, i mean um, we were surprised from. to hear that care um, that uh Imifile was being prodded or you know primed to uh, run for office in 2023. Um, I don't know what is why they want. They want his downfall or to end his career. Because <laughs> I, mean, I think it's good that but we'll get to some Wadu's um, um, opinion as we go on. But um, let's shift our attention to uh, the nation newspaper with these headlines. Um, uh, of course, Abakari's uh, extradition is something we'll look at later. So we'll leave that for for major discussion. But Asu grounds Vastis for four weeks. Um, parents, students tell federal government to act on demands. And uh, to catch the vanguard, we had that breaking news yesterday on the program. Uh, excitement over new Olu Badon, Buhari hails Balogun's appointment. Nice to know that it's been uh, finally uh, done and dusted with. Why customs can't meet 30.019 trillion Naira target by CG? These are targets being given to them, I think, by the National Assembly. Yeah, but the details on page 38 of that paper, one can check that out. Um, at the bottom of the front page of the Nation newspaper, Osho APC primary, guns boom, panic in Oshobo. Guns boom, panic in Oshobo. And the last time I heard about guns being shot in Lagos State or in the Southwest was um, the NURTW. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure that this they have anything to do with it this time. APC convention sale of forms fails to begin. Uh, Forty-eight point six one percent of private candidates pass WAS. That's the West African School Certificate uh, examinations. So I don't know why they don't call it WAIC. Uh, anymore, call it was, but it's it's uh, interesting. Those are stories coming on the front page of the nation. 
All right, let's move away from the Nation newspaper this morning as we quickly check out the leadership newspaper, just like I mentioned. You have the NDLEA indicts Abel Kiari for other cops of drug trafficking and suspect arrested. This great super cop is a member of transnational drug cartel. We have evidence to jail him. Uh, this is what the NDLE is, is saying. Poor preparation, no sale of farm threatens APC convention. What is really going on? I mean, but I'm, I'm sure that, you know, as we proceed in the course of the conversation, we'll talk about that. Sign electoral bill now. PDP governors advise President Mohamed Buhari. And just before we move away, you also have disagreement with federal government force as to, to strike for the 15th time in 23 years. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. That's quite a lot. Really a lot. Are you sure it's not something personal? <laughs> it's not personal. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, you know, since... Uh, now let's leave, let, okay. let, let that slide. Seven month panel began, begins probe of Zamfara deputy governor and school short in eight Katsina local government over banditry. Uh, you have the EU and Max uh, 820 million pound digital economy package for Nigeria for the want of time. That's the much we can actually take. All right. Let's quickly go to the punch. Um, this morning we'll quickly run through um, the stories on the front page. At the top, uh, FG. Uh, Gross debt to grow by 92 percent hits uh, 136 trillion naira in 2026, says IMF. I think at this point, uh, maybe we can just all <laughs> leave ourselves in the hands of God. Uh, ASU begins four week a rollover strike. Uh, governors oppose action in state varsities. PDP governors accuse FG of uh, insincerity, duplicity in dirty fuel saga. After 42-day vacancy, marking day names Lekon Balogun, 42nd Olu Bado. Fuel scarcity, uh, armed policemen deployed to control queues, commuters stranded. Marketers complain of adulterated PMS trapped in filling stations. At the bottom of the front page of the Punch newspaper, UN carpets FG as Nigeria records 3,604 cholera deaths in 425 local government areas uh lagos robbers shoot businesswoman hospital demands police report victim dies fire me dodges questions on 2023 presidential bid says prayers ongoing i think after um Tinubu's own statement of um, um saying he's still consulting this is the next best thing we've had this one says he's still praying <laughs> um another one it's historical fallacy to say Ohanese hasn't campaigned enough for 2023 Obizo, Obiozo, okay? Uh, wife disagrees as husband testifies how spouse, spouse killed friend and dismembered buddy. And finally, from the punch, ignore threats ex-SSG, next Oshun governor, declares a regular shola. Page 14 has details. At this point, I'd like to bring in an uh, uh, analyst, a chartered mediator and conciliator, um, Chris Kende Wandu. Maybe he might be the one to solve the federal government, uh, Asu Ampas. Uh, Chris Kende Wandu, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us once again. Good morning. Thanks for having me once again. What are your thoughts on, on, on what we learned yesterday, which is uh, captured in many of the papers this morning, Asu embarking on that uh, one month warning strike. We hear that um, it's uh, going to be a four week rule of a strike, and uh, the governors of states are also um, saying the lecturers in state tertiary institutions should not even think about joining the strike. Um, it was the news for told, and uh, this has been brief for uh, weeks. And don't forget, um, last Monday, I uh, also had a one, one day a free lecture. Uh, uh, I don't know what to call sensitization. it. Sensitization. Right. They call it sensitization. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, to sensitize their members to get ready for what they call the mother of all strike. And students um, as well. Yes. Then, um, after that one day, um, they, they said that by the weekend they'll be able to come out with a categorical statement on whether they're going to go on strike or not. So by Monday morning, uh, they came out with that. Uh, uh, the information and notice of going on strike for um, for one month, and um, just as you rightly uh, 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 yourself and Messi rightly analyzed, when you look at from the data that coming in from 1990 to 2020 or thereabout, you will see the number of 
um, strike that also have had, and I'm sure that is the only union in Nigeria that had that level, that number of strikes. Not even the NLC or any other level. The nearest to be the NMA. But uh, it has it has been long in coming because why the government have failed to do what they are supposed to do. They had an agreement with ASO. An agreement was signed, and uh, based on that, uh, uh, ASO called up the strike. I remember Messi asking me last week that why is it that ASO normally call off a strike when they know that the government have not fulfilled the agreement um, that they reach with uh, with ASO. And I said that if we don't, we also will be the first set of people to start condemning ASO for not refusing to for refusing to call up the strike. But this is a one month uh, strike. We are back to the trenches. Um, last year, I think it was for over 11 uh, months or uh, 10 months or there about all the tertiary institutions, the federal state universities lost one academic session. And for anybody to come to say that, uh, the state government to say that uh, state uh, university should not, they should not dare to go on strike, they have no hold over that because they uh, ask you, if we didn't do state uh, university also uh, assemble, uh, as we go to the uh, national body. So they also joined the strike. Um, when two elephants by it's always the grass that suffers. The federal government and the are back to trenches. It's the students that will now remain at home. And as we always say, the devil will always find for, for a, an idle hand. And that it seems to be where we are today. Now, the next thing you see, Kofi, is you see the, uh, the federal government rushing to uh, the industrial court to seek for an injunction to stop us from going on strike. That's what they've always done. But since the ASU have been threatening to go on strike, the Ministry of Labor, the Federal Ministry of Labor, the Federal Ministry of Education, as well as the Federal Government have not done anything to call them to discuss issues relating to the strike. Now, um, the strike is on. Let's see how this pans out. Mm. All right, so quickly, uh, as much as this would just also be part of our, you know, the crux of our conversation in the course of the show, let's share your thoughts on this one. Uh, drug bust, how the NDLEA nailed, arrested DCP carry and four others. That's also dominating all of the papers, and that has been a top trending conversation uh, in the Nigerian space. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Are you surprised? Are you shocked? Saying being shocked is uh, an understatement. Shock in the fact that this is coming too close to uh, a period when um, DCP Abakari, uh, the super core, I was having an issue with the American government as I guess the issue relating to hush pop. And that, don't forget that the PSC, uh, Police Service Commission, uh, just last week, as the uh, 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 another report on the one, well, the rejected report that was submitted by the committee is set up to look at that um, allegations and have given the IGP just two weeks to come up with a fresh report on the issues raised. Now, bang, this came in. And uh, this seems to have put a big spanner to the works because um, uh, there have been so, so many insinuations of people that say, oh, you know, Nigeria, I just will always come up with something. They say, oh, the whole idea of this uh, NDLA thing is um, to make sure that uh, Abakari is not extradited to the U.S. so that they can remain here and rest here. I don't buy that idea because alleging that somebody is involved with drugs is even more worse than the allegation of hush puppy. If you know what it takes to be involved in, in, in drugs across the globe, know every country has about that. And to, be, to, even make, to even believe that a super cop, somebody that um, is supposed to be an enforcer of the law, is the one involved in this. This to me is too traumatizing and it's, very, it's a very big um, issue. Uh, but the police authorities said they have handed them and called us to the uh, NDLA yesterday, which NDLA has come back to a press statement by Femi Baba Femi, the spokesperson of uh, NDLA. Now, but the police also went further to make a statement uh, in, the, in the course of their own press release that it is not only the policemen, that there are also members, uh, officers of NDLA that are involved in those in those uh, drug uh, related issues and they were specific with uh, um, um, Akanu ibm international airport in Enu. and the idea is saying that the NDLA DG should also make sure that those that have been involved that they, because the police said they have had their own investigation so i realized that also some members of NDLA are also involved with that so he's calling on the dg of NDLA 
uh, Retired General Uba Mara to also make sure that those that have been figured by the NDA in their own investigation are also arrested and made to face it. But this to me is a very terrible uh, news. All right, uh, thank you, Chris Kenewando. Let, let's look at uh, another story off the front page of uh, the Punch newspaper. The uh, fuel scarcity issue or the dirty fuel issue is still persisting, um, and Nigerians are still on the queues. Uh, the PDP governors are accusing the federal government of insincerity and duplicity in the fuel, dirty fuel saga. The PDP governors um, finding their voice. Uh, in, in this matter. What are your thoughts on this? Um, is this what do you expect the opposition party to, to do to play its role? And would you like to see maybe more voices, you know, coming up in, on this particular issue? Well, it's not only the PD. Even we as journalists uh, raise our voices. I saw the report of your correspondent on the, uh, the problem being faced by Nigeria trying to get fuel. Um, Lagos is even a bit lucky. I was using for lucky um, a bit because in Abuja, for the past going to since December, there are about the Abuja, those living in FCT have not had it um, easy. They've been doing on a daily basis and they have not been getting fuel. So if we're in Abuja, where the NMP is cited or cited or whatever, whichever we refer to, people can get fuel at the seat of power. I'm talking about that is where the seat of that is where the presidency is. That is where the national is. That is where the Supreme Court is. We three, even within the three arms of a central area of Abuja, we cannot find fuel. And I'm sure that our ministers on the daily basis that they drive around Abuja and they see the queue. The president is aware. Uh, it's not every time that the president takes a chopper to the airport when he's traveling out. The vice president is uh, in Liberia. I don't know whether he's back. If he didn't take his chopper to, um, to get to the airport, he must have passed through um, the, um, the airport road. I must see a long queue of fuel of Nigerians queuing up for long hours just to buy fuel. And to me, it's an indictment of the government because if we have done what we ought to do and they be able to fulfill their promises that they made to Nigerians in 2015 to revive all the refineries and stop and build new ones and stop the importation of fuel, we won't be finding where ourselves where we are today. So it's not just about PDP or opposition party. Every Nigeria totally is aghast and um, uh, is not, is not, uh, we are not happy about what is happening. I'm well, talking for okay. from me. Do, do, do you think some, some and heads... In the same situation, then we Yeah. What do you think about the fact that uh, heads have not rolled till now? And that's number one. Number two, you are saying that Nigerians are concerned about the situation. You know, it's not just PDP, the media. You know, media, we, we can only report. We can only tell. We can only maybe give commentary once or twice. You know, we can give, give analysis if it's an issue of public interest, not political. Um, uh, Nigerians are concerned, um, you know, civil society. But a concern is just on, the, on, 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 the, on TV, on radio, at home, or online. We're just concerned and sitting down and just say, oh, we are, we are concerned. I, I, is that enough? Because this is a serious issue that no. goes deep down. No. Is that enough? That's number one. Number, number two, no head has rolled from the government angle till now. We are concerned. Uh, we are not just reporters. We are journalists. Uh, you use your car. I'm sure I don't know whether you have a black web or you have a, 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 a filling station behind your house where you're getting your own fuel. I'm sure Messi has been suffering the same thing. I'm sure she can't fuel her car. <laughs> so it's not that we journalists we are concerned. We are journalists. And it's even worse for us because on a daily basis we have to move around. So rather we just sit in the offices. If you have to get a report, if you just as, as you are living safe now, you can just be told to run quickly to um, uh, to a papa to, to tidy up a report. You have to go. You are not going to trek. You are not going to take a cadre. So if it is going to be an official vehicle, definitely that, that vehicle has to be felt. Now, yeah, talking about head ruling, I like what Messi said initially. The head should start ruling from the president. The president should be the one, the head should start ruling. First and foremost, we are forgotten that we have the president is the minister of petroleum. See, the Dipri Yesiva is minister of state for petroleum. So if there's any head that has to rule, it has to start from the head. It has to start from the minister of petroleum. It's obvious that that office is too big uh, for the president, or the president is too busy 
to be able to handle that office. Then okay. you should step but, aside but, and let somebody come and people that be able to handle it. Chris Wando, now, we so, so we're, around the, we're, we're calling it off now in no time, but i just quickly like to share your thoughts on this one. It's on the leadership newspaper as well as the, on the Vanguard. And the People's Democratic, I mean, governors under the People's Democratic Party are asking the president to sign the electoral bill. They're also alleging that uh, the refusal of the president to sign, I mean, the fact that he hasn't signed the bill, it just shows his unwillingness to uh, give Nigerians a reformed electoral bill. Uh, quickly, let's have you share your thoughts on that one. We should stop waiting on the president. If the president refuses to sign, there's a time frame. I don't know the number of days now, today, as of today. If the president refuses to sign, then the National Assembly has a right to override the president's uh, signature and now pass that bill um, a second time or to, to, to pass the bill. So um, the president, I think, has about 30 days. If at the, that day, 30 days elapses and the president is signing, then the National Assembly should override. Um, the president and get that in pass. And once they pass it, it becomes law. So whether the president likes it or not, I think our attention should be shifted to the uh, to the National Assembly and not to the president any longer. But, 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 but the president. National Assembly, you have a National Assembly that's dominated by the ruling party. I mean, we're talking about the APC. How can these things be in the words of the scripture? Are they not the one that passes, <laughs> even with their majority number? They are the one that passed it. So it's not a question of the being dominated or not being dominated. The same um, APC dominated uh, House of Representatives have seen it. We are the one that passed the bill. So they should do the needful if the president refuses to sign. We cannot continue waiting for the year and continue to wait on the president. Let them do, do, do the needful. If they don't do it, then we will now come to the conclusion um, um, what Nigerians have been saying over the years that they are just a bull, uh, toothless bulldog that does back and cannot bite. This is the time for them to stand up and make sure that this bill is passed. So Nigeria can, Nigeria can get ready for the election that is coming up in 2023. Nigeria can say that they cannot be able to do anything until the, that, uh, that bill is signed into law. So while you wait for the president, he has just barely about 20 days or thereabout to sign it into law. If they don't do it, then we should hold the National Assembly responsible for the non uh, passage of that bill. That is my take on it. So we cannot continue waiting on the president. Don't forget that the president has refused to sign this. Um, this uh, act, uh, this is the third time he's going to refuse to sign it. And I'll continue, I will continue to wait for the president. He has made his own input and said some sessions of that bill should be removed. And the National Assembly have done that. So what is he waiting for again? Interesting. Um, we have to pull the plugs at this time and, uh, of course, move on. Um, to our other segments. But um, uh, time will tell if the National Assembly will do the needful, like you said, um, which I don't know if it's been done in the history of Nigeria. Maybe it will be a first, which is to uh, override the president and um, go ahead to pass a bill. Um, but, it but has been done before. So it has been done before. In, in, the in this democratic dispensation? No, no, no. Yeah, democratic since 1999, but not this particular dispensation. This particular Okay, all right, all right. That's fantastic. That's previous um, uh, National Assembly then. Thanks for the information. Uh, Chris K. and Wando, it's been a thrill having you. And in the short time we've had, you've been able to give us a perfect uh, analysis of the issues and matters arising and stories on the front pages. Uh, we, we, we say thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And the rules for, for mercy. <laughs> All right, you know, we see we guys we never get anything, you know, we never get anything for Valentine's, you know, that's gender discrimination, wouldn't you say? <laughs> well, thank you so much for being part of the show. We appreciate your time. Mercy, everyone is giving you all the the, the I haven't seen gifts. them. This, this is my brother. Audio, 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 uh, audio roses. All right, I'm feeling bad. I should have come with something for you, but not to worry. Okay. Not to worry. We'll do it after now. Every day can be Valentine's. Well, know? I would definitely hold you to that one. Well, that's so much we can actually take uh, on off the press. We will return with off the press tomorrow. But in the meantime, we'll step on the brakes, and when we return, we head straight to our first major conversation. It promises to be an amazing time. Please stay tuned.